We all want to know what the weather's going to be, and that means we all want to know what Pat Pagano has to say. Good morning, Pat. And good morning, Marshall and everybody. Uh, it is warm. It is humid. Uh, showers and thunderstorms are far away to the northwest, and uh, we have that chance today with a high near 90. And then tonight, a scattered thunderstorm left over. We drop to the mid-60s. 90 again tomorrow, sunny, less humid. Partly sunny Thursday, mid-80s. Sunny clouds, mid-80s Friday. And Saturday looks okay. Sunday will be another hazy, humid day with the chance of thunderstorms. So August will basically come in the way July goes out. Now, the uh, thunderstorm. So, so basically, uh, the thunderstorms went north of us last night. Uh, about, uh, I would say, about almost 40 miles north of us and to the west of us. But we have a, thunderstorm, a chance of thunderstorms starting today, right? Yeah, our front should help uh, move some of that stuff uh, in the area. Uh, not everybody's going to see it, uh, but if you're lucky enough to get some rain, um, I'm sure it'll rain on me uh, because at 2.45 I have to go to the dentist. So that's prime time. So I'll probably get caught in that. Uh, but other than that, there's really not much in the way of rainfall expected this week. And we talked about that yesterday, too. So this is a relatively dry week. Uh, Tropic-wise, we're still waiting for Isaiah uh, to be born. Uh, he, when he's born, will move across the Windward Islands. And uh, we'll take a nap by this weekend. It's going to be, you know, somewhere over the Bahamas. And then we'll have to just wait and see what happens. It could, it could again get uh, eaten up by the high-pressure area over the Atlantic and, and just fall apart. Or uh, it may try to come up toward the Carolinas. So it's just a wait-and-see game. That's all it is. Well, as long as it tries <laughs> and isn't successful. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That's it. And these patterns, boy. Uh, what was it? Gonzalo? Look what happened with Gonzalo. Uh, tropical storm. Thinking that was going to become a hurricane. Went the opposite way. Just fizzled out on the uh, northern coast of South America. Well, there's a lot of things I fizzled out at in life. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. You know, it happens to the best of us, even tropical storms. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. So, yeah. um, so that's it. So I'm going to be running around today, and um, that's right. You know, Today's Teeth Day. Well, Teeth Day in the afternoon. This morning at 10:30, I have to go for a COVID test uh, because I have the procedure on Friday, and they won't let you have the procedure unless they know that you are COVID free. So at 10:30, I have to go for that. So, knowing your good luck, watch, you'll come up with a positive and you'll have to have another test. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope not. I certainly hope not. Well, look uh, at all those baseball players. Yeah, what about that? I mean, isn't that going to really uh, cramp the Well, here's the know, whole the thing. They, they, they shortened it down to a 60-game season. And, yes, they did increase the rosters. But when one team has 14 players, it's a combination of players and trainers – comes down with it, um, it you know it's going to happen again. And you can't lose too many games to the season when you only have a 60-game season to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. Baseball's on the of, uh, pre precipice of, of, of having to cancel this year, unless they've got some, some great plan up their sleeve. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. When I heard that last night, I said, oh, this is trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. I mean, it wasn't just one or two. Right? No, 14, 14, 14. 14 members of the team. Now, not, they're not all players. Some of them are trainers and stuff like that, but still. Yeah. Obviously, these players didn't protect themselves when they were in Florida. And it, that's crazy because what I always say, you want to take a risk with your own life, that's one thing. But uh, when you with COVID nineteen, you can you can get by it perfectly well, be a carrier, and give it to somebody who's not perfectly well, and they and they, they can get very sick and die. Right. So yeah. that, that's what people have to remember when you're wearing a mask and when you're social distancing. 
you are basically uh, trying to protect yourself, but you are more than that. You are protecting someone else because it's up to each and every one of us to make sure that if we have this, we don't spread it. I think that's great advice. And, um, you know, the whole thing is very, very scary because, I mean, they're trying with the vaccines, but Marshall, no one really knows where this is going. No. No, not, in this, not, not in this country anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> not in this country anyway. But, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, Jill pointed it out. There was a – Connecticut did a, a, a canvas. And basically uh, 70-some percent, I think, of teachers want to go back to teach. And 80 percent of uh, parents and students want to go back to school. And some people thought that was a surprise. I don't think that's a surprise. I think teachers want to teach. I think – I think students want to learn. I think parents want kids to go back to school. I just think they want a plan to be put in place where the students and the teachers are as safe as possible and therefore grandparents and other people at your home are as safe as possible. I have no doubt that people want to go back to school, students and teachers. They def definitely do. But uh, that doesn't uh, break the fact that Connecticut now is – the lowest the, the, is, has slowed the rate of coronavirus the most. Uh, and uh, nobody's in a hospital. In, in Connecticut, Pat, there's not one hospital patient of COVID-19 anymore. Not one. Wow. In Litchfield County, we've done a real great job here. Now, there are people that still have it that show up, but hospitals in Litchfield County for the first time are completely empty of COVID-19 patients. That was reported on yesterday. Well, I mean, that's great. I know New York is doing very well, as, uh, you know, like Connecticut. So, I mean, that's thumbs up. You know, uh, it, it takes everybody, it takes everybody, not just a few of us, but everybody to, uh, you know, keep the rules. And it works. So that's all people want to see. They want to see a decent plan for their school districts. That, that that parents that want to have lo distance learning for the kids can have that. Other other students who want to go back to school can do that, uh, do it safely and do it under, under under different protocols. So that's what we have to wait and see here, in the state yeah. of Connecticut and New York. So. Yeah, that's going to be a rough. That's going to be a rough call. I don't envy anybody who has to make that call, and I certainly don't envy the parents if they say, "Yeah, we're opening schools." A lot of uh, parents are very hesitant about sending their kids to uh, to school. So we'll have to see what happens because we've done a good job here in New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut and Rhode Island and New Jersey of knocking this virus down. Now if the rest of the country would follow suit, we'd be better yeah. off. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Well, I don't have that well, that problem. Although I do have to worry about, you know, um, my great my great nephew who's going into what grade is he going into? I think he's going into seventh. He goes into seventh grade, and all summer long he's been staying up to three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> staying up till three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Why? Playing playing you know playing his games and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, but like I said to my sister, I said, you know, you should try to talk to him and uh, get him to go to start going to sleep early again. Because if he has to go to school, I mean, they're pretty much thinking, oh, I won't have to go back to school. You know, it, it'll be virtual only, uh, learning. Uh, but if he has to go back to school, boy, what a rude awakening that's going to be. Well, they're going to have to get him ready. You, know, you, can't, you can't go to staying up and playing games at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to school. No, you really can't. And uh, when you get used to it, and you and I are examples, when you get used to getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, you always get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So if they're getting used to staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be real hard for them to go to sleep any earlier. 3 o'clock in the morning. And then go to school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he won't be too attentive in school. <laughs> Be fighting to keep his eyelids open. What a crazy world. Huh? <laughs> <It> really, 
It really is. Between sports, between politics, between everything. Everything's gone haywire. You know, it reminds me of one of my favorite Gary Larson cartoons. This guy's on the phone in an office in the company. I think it's called the Acme Haywire, uh, Acme Wire Company. And you see there's wire coming out of all the windows. There's spools of wire. And he's on the phone <laughs> talking to a supervisor. And he was saying, uh, Mr. So-and-so, uh, this is so-and-so from Acme, Haywire, Acme Wire Company. Everything has gone, well, you know what, <laughs> haywire. <laughs> That's what this country's like. It's like everything's going haywire. It's just crazy. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know either, but... Um, but I know that you're getting teeth installed later this today, right? A year and a half later. Wow. What year a journey. And, and an expensive journey, folks. You could have bought you could have bought a top model luxury car for what Pat is investing in his mouth. Yeah. Really? What about thirty right. thirty forty thousand dollars, right? Uh it came up to just about thirty. Oh. All right, so maybe not a top model, but, and, <laughs> but still right. thirty thousand dollars. Uh, these are this is all the top teeth. So um you know, and I'm sure it's not going to be pain free today. So that's got me a little concerned. You know, I think she's going to have to, you know, give me a couple of needles. Because don't forget, they're uh, they're not just screwing these. They they're actually screwing the teeth in, and you know, and that's where the problem comes in for some of the uh, uh, implants, the sockets. Some of the sockets are are up um, into the jawbone, and they hit the tissue. So when they screw them in, it touches and that's pain. <laughs> well, there's. I think there's going to be more pain coming out of your back, your back, your back pocket, uh, <laughs> to go with the physical pain coming out of your mouth. <laughs> mm -hmm. But just think when it's all over, Pat. Just think. Yeah, it'd be nice. I could just take a deep breath and say, "Thank goodness." You'll be able to whistle while you work. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> You know, get back yeah. to the old days. <laughs> well, I want you to have a good day today, as, as good as possible. I'm going to try. You do the same. Keep cool. Watch out for those storms. And um, we're back tomorrow for another exciting episode of As the Weather Turns. <laughs> or doesn't. <laughs> or doesn't, right. All right, Pat. Have, uh, have a good day today. Try to get through everything. Thanks, Marshall. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Pat began this morning in the Weather Center with a check on our tri-state forecast.